The Expedition 48 crew members have been working on the transfers in and out of the uh, Dragon cargo ship that just recently arrived at the station. Part of the uh, cargo of that Dragon is a piece of hardware that is vital to future station operations. And that is the first of two international docking adapters. This one, which has arrived at the station in the Dragon trunk on the outside of the station, is uh, targeted for installation during a spacewalk by Jeff Williams and Kate Rubens next month. To learn more about this addition to the station, I recently talked with Sean Kelly, NASA's senior project manager in the Development Projects Office. I started by asking him to summarize what an IDA is and why it's needed now. So we uh, developed the International Docking Adapter uh, post-shuttle because the docking system that we used as part of the shuttle program uh, was a proprietary system. It was of, of Russian design with NASA influence on it to adapt it to the Space Shuttle Orbiter. But it was also something that was unique to the Russian company that, that built it, Energia. At the same time, we were already looking ahead to exploration. As part of exploration, we were very interested in developing some international standards. One of the leading international standards was the International Docking System Standard. The participants for that standard are all the current uh, International Space Station program participants, uh, Russia, ESA, CSA, JAXA, uh, Canada, and of course NASA. And it was a collaborative effort to develop a new interface standard that would be out in the public sector and available to anyone and everyone that wanted to uh, build to that interface standard. We felt that was a good empowering way to stimulate competition, stimulate technology and different ways of looking at things since we are entering a, a commercial sector now. And uh, as part of that, you can actually go out to internationaldockingstandard.com, download the interface standard, and any company in the world, any uh, country in the world, can build to that interface standard and be assured that they'll be compatible with this. When the first IDA was lost in a launch accident, the second one had already been built by Boeing at a facility here in Houston and shipped to the Kennedy Space Center. And that's the one that has just arrived on orbit. What was the plan to provide a replacement for that first one? One thing that uh, NASA is excellent at is contingency plans. So we actually had contingency uh, plans in place uh, in case something happened. We also had plans in place in case we needed a third docking adapter. Um, based on the international docking standard and the interest in developing new docking systems and also the potential that we could add new participants in the future. Certainly uh, the space station has grown and there's a, the interest in the space station has, has grown across the world as far as uh, participation. So we'd also had plans to, to, if we needed to, build a third docking adapter. So we had uh, adequate structural spares available. We didn't have enough spare parts to build a complete international docking adapter, but we identified the spare components that were going to be the long lead time and made sure we had those on hand. Uh, had we not built a, a third docking adapter, those would not have gone unused. We would have used them for um, some of the qualification programs of these new docking systems. So either way, we were in a good position to make sure that we got good value for the taxpayer out of those uh, structural spares and those spare components that we had for Ida. The, the plan is, I understand it, is that the first users of this would be the commercial crew partners that NASA is working with, Boeing and, and SpaceX. Those are both American companies. Why do we call it an international docking adapter? Well, there's really two reasons, and that's an excellent question. Um, the reason we call it the international docking adapter, first and foremost, is because it's the first implementation of the international docking system standard. We're fully compliant with that international standard. NASA wanted to lead the way. Um, we also see the potential for um, other international partners to come to the International Docking Adapter. Part of the thought behind naming it the International Docking Adapter essentially was to advertise to the community that we are open for business for additional international uh, business. And of course, you mentioned the commercial crew. They are likely to be the very first users of the new International Docking Adapter. And that also helped stimulate uh, commercial enterprises because a U.S. 
commercial company is building the first one for their vehicle, uh, Dragon. SpaceX is designing their own system, building their own system. We also have Boeing under contract to build the NASA docking system, which will go on the Orion vehicle and support exploration. So the international docking adapter configuration is fully compliant with what our plans are for exploration. So in many ways, we're laying the groundwork, and it's really the gateway to the future of exploration and cislunar activities. Describe where on the station the two IDAs are, are going to be installed and, and what kind of flexibility that uh, affords the station program, station operators. Yes, yeah, so these international docking adapters get installed on the PMAs, the two PMAs that we have available, PMA2 and PMA3. Uh, PMA2 is currently located on Node 2 forward, and that will be the final location uh, for the international docking adapter 2 that's going up on uh, SpaceX 9. It's already, as you know, birthed up there, and we're looking forward to the activities to extract it, robotically extract it, and start the installation of that. And then we're going to be moving PMA3 and installing that on new, Node 2 Zenith. And that will be the final location for the second uh, active docking adapter that we have on board, IDA 3. Right now, the current plans are to launch that on SpaceX 14, but uh, we have some flexibility on that. Uh, we only need one international docking adapter up there to support the initial crew uh, activities, commercial crew activities. At a later date, when we have multiple commercial crew uh, vehicles and potentially cargo vehicles that we'll use docking, we'll need a second docking adapter at that time. So we have some flexibility on the schedule, both for the launch and also for moving the PMA-3 to its final location. And then this would, you have then three different potential locations for vehicles to dock there at the front of the station. That's correct. That's absolutely correct. So that creates a lot of flexibility for the program. When we look to commercial cargo, uh, under the CRS-2 commercial cargo contract, NASA has asked the providers to provide an option for docking. So today, cargo vehicles all berth to the International Space Station. Uh, but we are also trying to uh, allow an option for those cargo vehicles to convert to docking. Uh, so hence the, the reason why we may in the future actually need a third docking port if we do decide that docking is uh, the way of the future and, and we can work on some automated rendezvous and docking techniques uh, for this on the space station, then we'll be in good shape to uh, consider a third docking adapter uh, and still have berthing and docking available for our program. Be very exciting to uh, to see it finally get ready to put in place. Absolutely, absolutely. This has uh, been a uh, very active activity. It's uh, an activity that spanned across uh, uh, numerous states in the United States. All the, I think at last count, there were 28 states that contributed yeah. components to the space station uh, in, in, international docking adapter. So that's pretty exciting. That's that's good activity for the U.S. and also. Uh, we obtained some of the structural components from Energia. So this really is a worldwide uh, effort. Um, and uh, because of the international participation in the International Docking System Standard, this really is, is something that uh, numerous partners are very excited about, the opportunity to see this installed and, and the opportunities it will bring for docking to the space station. Now, only a few weeks away, so it'll be exciting to see it happen. Very few yeah. weeks away. Looking forward to learning more about the uh, international docking adapters coming to the International Space Station with uh, Sean Kelly, NASA's senior project manager in the Development Projects Office.